I never expect this tie to be as simple as this until I gave it a try and I can't wait to see you also recording it because in this video I'm going to show you step by step approach to the style you're seeing on the screen right now. Believe me, its process is very smooth and easy. Welcome to Nidu Mr. Channel. I am Olabanjo Isaiah. The first thing we are going to do is the normal basic of every wear, which is joining of the shoulders and the yoke. Remember I told you that you should always iron the seams of your job as this is gonna give a fine finishing to your job and whenever you are ironing the outer part of your cloth, you should always use cover cloth. Now I'm going to run a straight stitch at the base of the yoke and also the neck. Now I'm going to fold the cloth into half and put emmy gum at the center front, back and shoulders of the cloth. This is to ensure that both sides of the cloth stay together throughout the next processes. This is the point at which you check the size of the neck to see if it fits yours. If it doesn't, please trim to increase its size. Here I have 17.5 inches and the size of my neck is 18 or 18.5 inches in fact i'm very very comfortable with 19 so i'm going to increase the size of the neck now measuring the size of the neck again on fold i have 9.5 inches which is equivalent to 19 inches now i'm going to trace this out on the paper just as in recreating of a pattern Ensure that the concerned part of the fabric balance well on the paper by pressing it down with a iron. Trace out the circumference of the neck and mark out the center front and back. This is the point at which you decide how thick you want your pattern to be here. In this video, I use 1.25 inches. Believe me, this is not the rule. That is, you are free to use whatever size that suits you. As there is no rule governing how long the opening should be, I'm going to use 8 inches. Now I'm going to cut out the pattern. Please mind not the speed at which some things will be done in this video. This is to make sure that the duration of the video is as short as possible. Now I'm going to trace the pattern out on my fabric. Ensure to set it properly before you do so. Please mind not the markings on the trays, for I thought they are gonna be a useful element when doing this. The one I'm doing now is sewing allowance and the law governing this as we discussed in one of our previous videos titled insertion. So I will advise you to click the video at the top right corner of the screen right now to check out that tutorial or do later that you may have a full understanding of what is going on here. Do not forget to notch the midpoint. We're gonna need this lining for a reason that will be unveiled to you in the course of the tutorial. Coming back to the pattern produced earlier, we will need to reproduce this this time with a same allowance. Remember I said to you that the law governing this has been discussed in one of our previous videos 
two years ago precisely so do well to check out in session the video is still on this channel These I'm going to cut out also. Let's remove the pattern that was reproduced. Now that the archetypal pattern has been separated, it's time to bring out the curve. You will agree with me that the size of thickness that we have here is no longer 1.25 inches but 1.75 inches because of the seam allowance that has been added to this pattern. So this is what we will measure to bring out the curve. Now this is the pattern that we are going to use on our ad color stay for the neck. That things may be very handy for me here, uh, I'm going to do a rough sketch around this pattern and cut it out. At first, I wanted to use cello tape to hold those patterns to the interfacing, but I remember that it is very important that the two sides of this interfacing stay firmly together for a very neat cut, and this will be very impossible with cello tape. That is why I introduced stapler to pin the pattern to the interfacing. Now I can neatly cut out the pattern on the interfacing. That you may cause damage to neither the pattern nor the interfacing, I will advise you to be very gentle while removing the paint by first straightening the folds of the paint. Now I can save those two patterns for subsequent uses. Now let's stem these to the fabric. Let there be same allowance when cutting out the inner part of the pattern. Why give it a fine trimming when doing the outer part? We need to cut out another fabric for the facing. You are advised to be very generous when doing this. That is, you should cut your material excessively. 
now let's take this to our seal machine for sealing for those that have been following this channel for quite a century it has been mentioned to you countless of times that whenever you are sealing around your interfacing you are expected to let there be allowance between your sealing line and the interfacing for beautiful facing Now let's trim out the excess. This is the allowance between your interfacing and sewing line that I talked about. Now I'm going to turn this over. Apology for the speed of the video again. Remember I said to you that this is to make sure that the duration of the video is as short as possible that you may attend to some other things that matters. Thank you very much. Now I'm going to lace this with emmy gum to hold the outer and inner parts of those neck firmly together. Now let's trim this. Remember to notch the midpoint of the neck then connect it at this point to the center back of the body. Now to the front, we are going to notch this point. Ensure that your notch doesn't exceed the same allowance. Let's close the neck. Now you will agree with me that connecting the center of the pattern to the center front of the body won't be a difficult task. Ensure that your stitch doesn't exceed the notch. Perfect. Right. Now we can seal the sides of this pattern from this point to the center back. Because I am not a fan of Ifalutin promises, I will tell you that this process is not going to be as simple as it's going to seem in this video. Yes, for at this session, I can tell you that I sealed and lose this many times before I finally got it correctly. So do not be discouraged when that happens to you. Do not say to yourself that, but it was very simple why Nidu Mr. was doing this. I'm telling you the bitter truth now. It was very difficult for me too, probably because it was my second time doing this time.
all right i believe the little squeeze i have here is something that i can correct with my steam iron so this is what it looks like at the bottom you see that now let's go to the other side you will agree with me that every tailor and seamstress have a particular side of the hand that they are very comfortable with on CU machine. I don't think there is anyone ambidextrous, maybe few. Uh, because this side of the hand is not too comfortable for me, that's why I'm going to seal to an extent here, then stop and continue from the center back. now we are almost done a very quick observation here you will notice that there are tensions or pools around the curve area of this design this is because we have not notched the area yes i had to do this even before sewing the neck to the body at all it was a mistake and to god be the glory that i have the small scissors that was what saved me from the mess i put myself here so you are advised to notch the curve areas before fixing the neck at all if you don't have the small scissors believe me it was a mistake and i won't like you to repeat the same now you can see how relaxed this area is after notching you see that there is no more pull or tension After properly notching the curve areas, we are going to press the old design with our steam iron. Make sure you use a very hot iron. Now this is looking good, but one more thing, we need to overlock those design uh, and also give a fine finishing to this job because it will be quite absurd to present this to our clients as a finished job. We ought to cover this part. Our clients ought not to be saying this. Yeah, forget the fact that I didn't overlock it. I didn't overlock it because I have a plan for that area. I know some will overlock and consider it a done job no it's not yet done we have to cover this after notching around the curve i'm going to press it down with iron
now we are going to use emmy gum to gum this Now we're gonna pretend like we want to remove the lining from the neck but we are not removing. We are only trying to open the fold here that we may seal it properly to the neck. If opening it is not easy for you, please use your steam iron to melt the fusible gum. Then you will see that opening will be very easy. Now we are going to seal around this. Now it is covered. That this may be considered as a finished job. We are going to do some workings on this lining. I'm going to fold the down part of this lining in such a way that it will exceed the yoke a little bit so that when I run another stitch at the base of the yoke it's going to hold the lining down and for the sides I'm going to put emmy gum then with needle and thread I will tack this point. The only way you can encourage me to do more tutorials like this is by liking the video, dropping a comment where you share your thoughts about the whole process, then hitting the subscribe button if you have not subscribed to this channel. Believe me, this is gonna bring me to the sense of awareness that there are people out there waiting for more tutorials from me. But if you don't do any of this, believe me, I'm gonna think that Ghost viewed my content and I may feel discouraged, you know. I may find it difficult to create another content so please make sure you do all of this to encourage me that I may keep bringing more wonderful tutorials to you. Thank you very much for who you have been to me on this app. I so much appreciate the love and support.